Okay folks, I'm King Blacktooth and welcome to my Solomon Grundy guide. Now I'm splitting it up into sections because it was getting quite big and difficult to manage and really hard to keep track of. So this section is about his trait, the pain chain. Now if you're a Solomon Grundy player, or even if you're not, you probably notice, you know what the pain chain is. It's an unblockable grab. It's pretty important to Solomon Grundy's game. You want to get into it as many times as you can to get the most damage from your combos and you want to get in it, into it as fast as you can so you can get sort of the benefit for the rest of the round and match. So to begin with, his pain chain when pressed is an unblockable grab basically. This is also unparryable to the likes of Batman, Wonder Woman, Killer Frost and the parryable people, people who can parry moves. So when you've actually got into it you get the choice to go into three different chains. I'm going to refer to them as the damage chain, the health chain and the chip chain. So the damage chain, this will do quite high damage, you know, pretty good, and it also increases the damage for the rest of the match or until you change the chain. The health chain, this does the most damage, so if you just want raw damage on your on your trait, then you want to go for the health chain, and it decreases the damage done for you for the rest of the match, so that's a good opportunity, a good one to go for. Now the third one, the chip damage chain, is got the lowest damage, it's actually not that good in damage wise, and it's an unusual buff. It, you take less chip damage for the rest of the match or until you change it, which can be good in some matchups. You can also meter burn your trait to absorb one hit, which becomes very useful and very effective with more advanced techniques later on. So some ways to get into your trait is forward 1-3 trait. You've got your, any anytime you get a back 3, you can get into your trait, normally by jumping 1-1 one, one trait. But basically the rules are they have to be grounded and in a throwable state, because some moves are not throwable and if they have armor on then you can't throw them that's a rule or if they're airborne but being juggled so if they're jumping you can't get them but if you just one one them or something then they become in a juggle state and you can catch them okay so grave rot is a special move he's got and this is pretty good to put on before you get a trait and you get a lot of opportunities especially if you do a meter burn swamp hands which i'll go into later now if you look for maximum damage off a normal Grave Rot, you still want to go for the Health Chain because it just continually does more damage. Because you don't get as many ticks, but the damage of the chain really still puts it ahead by about 2%. However, if you're doing a Meter Burn Grave Rot, then you want to go for the Damage Chain if you just want pure damage. Because the Damage Chain, as you can see here, it does a big long walk animation. And it's just continually ticking, that does 45%, that's really good. Okay, he, he recently got a buff on his Grave Rot tick, so that's really nice. So compare that to the Health Chain while you've got the ex Grave Rot, and he only does 41. So it's a nice 4% extra, and uh, depending on, you have to obviously weigh in which buff you want to have as well as the extra damage. Okay, so the Chip Chain, as I've already said, reduces the chip damage taken. It's a bit situational, you don't really want to be blocking heavily against tons of stuff, and even if you do so, it's not normally the biggest deal. You know, you normally want damage, or when you're getting hit, it reduces the overall combo damage. But characters like Deathstroke and maybe a couple of others which would really zone you, it really puts the pressure off you if they're trying to zone you tons and tons. So I'm going to go into it very, very specifically and talk about exactly how it works. So all moves in this game chip you down. Specials do a bit more, so this is chipping me down by 1.50%, 1.38% for example. But with this chip chain onto level 2, because you should always get to level 2 really, then it only does 0.15% and 0.14. So that is a division by 10. So that's a, uh, that's a big deal, okay? So it pretty much makes it so, instead of doing 1.5%, it does 0.1. So instead of 100 hits, it's going to take 1,000 hits. Okay, so it really just lets you not worry about chip damage at all the only thing you got to worry about there is is what is it is the time you know if they're zoning you all the time you just got to wonder about the time because you could sit there all day so if you've got the life lead it might be good to get into that and just sit down if they want to start zoning you all over the place okay so the next chain is the health chain now this is probably one of the most used ones because this one does the most damage uh, of all the chains without any EX Grave Rot on. So if you've got a Meter Burn Grave Rot, then if you want pure damage, go for the the damage chain instead. But if not, the Health Chain will give you the most damage. Now what the Health Chain does is I'm getting here, I'm doing a combo here, and it does... I mean, it's not a great combo because I'm not a Batman player. 
32%, okay? So when I actually have the health chain on, it will reduce that by about, I think the number is 1.25. So it divides it by 1.25, okay? So we'll see what the combo does now. As you can see, it's doing less integers all over the place. And now it's doing 26, so it's 32 to 26. So that's a nice 8%, which is pretty good. And it does the most damage, remember. Now, finally, the damage chain. I usually like to try and get in this, and it's probably one of the most common ones to use as well. It's either the health chain or the damage chain, most likely. And this one does nearly the most damage. It's like a couple of percentage off from the health chain. So it's not bad going in this one or the other one. You just lose a couple of percentage. But if you've got a meter burn grave rot, this does more as well, because you've got a, a really long walking animation where you're holding them close to your chest and getting all the ticks on, which is really nice. So this one just increases your damage for the rest of the match on all your moves. So I'm doing a basic combo here, nothing too fancy. And we'll see what this does. Okay, this does 44%, okay? So now I've already got the health chain, uh, the damage chain on, sorry. So now I'm doing the same combo again. And I believe it, it times it by 1.2, okay? So it adds 0.20% on all your moves. It does 51%, so that was a nice markup. Again, about 7%, which is pretty good. Okay, so now we've covered some of those basics. Your trait is clashable. Now, obviously, it has to be the second hit, and it can actually clash on the initial grab. So if that connects, they can clash it. But now they can also clash it anywhere in the middle as well. So when you're going through the animations, they can clash it. Now, there is actually only one point in each animation they can clash. So... Obviously, all these hits that I'm slamming them on the ground, they can't clash, because these should be able to clash as soon as possible. So it's on these little intervals they can clash. The damage chain does the most damage if they clash. It does 70% rather than 15 and 13, respectively, to the health and the chip. But if you've got a meter burn grave rot on, really, really, really always do the damage chain, because you still get this massively long walk animation, and it still does 35%. Okay? Compared to the health chain where he's really not holding him close to his chest hardly at all and you don't get such a long animation only gets 24 okay so meter burn grave rot they're gonna clash always do the how uh, the damage chain like this this looks awesome excellent 35 percent really nice so as we know it gives him one hit of armor it does stop grabs, so any command grabs, like walking corpses or Bane's command grab, that will also stuff that as well. You do have to be careful of double hitting moves and moves which are not throwable, because some normals are not throwable. Now, you can grab them out of the air. If they're doing a jumping attack, apart from maybe the flash, because he's got a two hitting attack, so that'll break it, you can do it. And you can also reverse this by just doing it, wait till they're over you on a cross up, and then pressing it, and you'll catch them on the opposite side, which is pretty nice. Another big thing you can do with the meter burn trait is to get through certain block strings. Now, I've gone through a lot of the annoying characters and I've tried to figure out what block strings you can meter burn trait through. It's basically the same as Batman trying to parry through certain block strings. Some of them have little bits of gaps where you can get through, okay? So let's have a look at this. Some of them are really good and some of them may be useful if you remember, okay? So if Batman does the punch, punch, kick, it's punishable. If he does the punch, 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 then it's not. So what you do is you hold back all the time to block it all the time and then just press the meter burn and the trait button together when the when the hit that you want to punish comes out, okay? So if you just the kick, you punish it. If you just the punch, you press it and nothing comes out. So it's kind of like a bit of an option select. If you just the kick, you punish him. If you just the punch, nothing comes out for you. And you can transpose this with a walking corpse if, for example, he flies really far away like that. And they usually like to stick the trait on at that point. So you could probably catch them by doing a walking corpse. So you use the armor on it to, to absorb that third hit and punish him. The so really good use for this is against Batgirl's wheel kick high-low mix-up. So she can do the overhead one and she can also do a low one off it. And it's really hard. I don't think you could do that on reaction. It's just like a mix-up. But now you can sort of nullify that with this trick. So if she does the low one, it is punishable. Okay? So I was standing up there, but I just 
at the time when that move would come out, no matter which one it was, I just press me to burn and trait, and it'll work. And if she does the overhead one, that one isn't punishable. But I press the button anyway, and nothing comes out. You've got to keep hold of block, though, okay? So, what you can do here is no matter which one she goes for, just always stand up, and then press that button anytime. You have to have meter, of course. Just press the button, and if she does the low, you'll punish it. If she does the high, you'll block it, no problem. Okay, so it pretty much nullifies the high-low mix-up in that wheel kick, which is a very annoying high-low mix-up, because you can't do anything about it. It's a multiple hit move, your armor won't help, you know, and then... Then there's plenty more block string. I'm going to go through a lot of block strings here with loads of different characters. Not all of them. I couldn't find any for Superman. He doesn't seem to have any gaps in anything. But hopefully these will show you some interesting block strings you can punish with the meter burn trait on some characters. Now, some of these can be quite tricky. They're quite tight timing, to be honest. The worst case scenario is that you probably push block them. You know, you waste a meter and push them away. Not inherently a bad thing, but if you didn't want it, then you may have wasted one meter. But try it out in training mode yourself. It, it is generally easy not to get the push block, providing you're pressing it when the attacks hit you, just about rather than just spamming the button. If you spam the button, you probably will get push block. Okay? So you have to know the the timing of the ones that you can punish, and then press the button for... Oh, she's done the wheel kick. When the next thing's coming up, press the, the trait button. Just hold the block and press the trait button. So another high-low mix-up you can punish is... Nightwing staff, he does the overhead or the low off a normal attack. Okay, so the overhead is punishable, but the low attack is not. Okay, so you can't meter burn through the low attack. So what you do is you always block low. If he does the low, nothing comes out. If he does the high, the meter burn trait will come out and punish him for it. So it kind of nullifies the, the overhead low mix up and it's really quite useful. But again, as I showed earlier, be careful of some special moves, some target combos which may not be throwable or have two really hit, quick hitting moves. Obviously you should be blocking anyway so you know it shouldn't be a problem. 